Welcome to my channel, The Diz at Phoenix, where I always talk about the Algerian national team and their players. If you are interested in that kind of thing, subscribe to my channel. I would really, really appreciate it. And also, I have another channel I started a few weeks ago called My Talks Football, where I talk about football in general, Champions League, European League, World Cup. There's going to be a lot of content, inshallah, about the World Cup. Um, very excited. Personally, I'm going to be for Team Senegal and Team Argentina. That's my thing, Senegal, because I just love that team. You know, Muslim, African. I mean, I love a lot of African teams, but, you know, I think they deserve to do well. Argentina, Messi, I am a big fan of Messi, but I'm a Man City fan and a Real Madrid fan. But Algeria is number one. Dahe Jazeer, one, two, three, vive Algérie, comme toujours. Anyways, I am doing a Q&A video today. And this is a little different, but hopefully you'll get to know me a little bit more. And it's Algeria and football related questions. So the first question is, what was the first Algerian match that I've seen? So I don't technically remember the first game because I was five years old, but I'll talk about specifically the games I remember. It was like one of the second games, third, fourth, Algeria, Egypt. Obviously, first leg, we beat them. Um, June 7, 2009, Algeria beat Egypt 3-1. Uh, Matmour scored, Grezel scored, Jabour scored, and for the Egyptian team, which was later on, uh, Abu Trika scored. Good player, but we were better that day. And the next game, November 14, 2009, uh, Egypt beat Algeria 2-0. Uh, Egypt, it was Zeki at the third minute. Motaib, Motaib, if I'm pronouncing it right, 90 plus fifth minute, and that was a very traumatizing event. What happened, as you know, our players got injured uh, from, they were in a bus, and Egyptian fan ran after a bus, and, uh, you know, hit our players, and notably Rafak Halish, who was, he later became captain, he was 21, 22, at the time when this happened, I believe. And, you know, most notably after he came out of the bus, bleeding from his forehead uh, in the hotel room, he's like, one, two, three, viva la Giri! And all the whole hotel room was lit up on fire. The famous Rafak Saifi, legend icon as well, he was saying, on n'est pas des frères, on n'est pas des frères. From the event, obviously, uh, Egyptians are great people. Algerians are great people. I can never hate a people like that. But it was very intense. Antara Yahya, Rafiq Saifi, Rafiq Halish. For a few examples, it was a crazy, crazy game. It was traumatic watching that, seeing that as a young uh, person later. Then we had to go to Zadet, Sudan. Sudan was backing us up. Um, and we had to go to Sudan because, you know, it was insanity uh, what happened. Um, you know, because we had a tie, like we won at home 3-1 and they won in their home 2-0. We had to do a tie, but they decided to do it in Sudan. Sudan people, alhamdulillah, they pack, backed us up for, I do not blame players. I do not blame the coach of Egypt at the time. Simply, I blame the the fans and um, those Egyptian, a few Egyptian fans. I cannot judge an entire population. That doesn't make any sense. Um, Algeria, Egypt, 2009. It was a crazy, crazy game. November 18th. We won... Um, by a goal by Antar Yahya, what a legend, uh, sent one of the central defenders, really, r really good player, uh, he scored in the 40th minute, I remember it like it was yesterday, I uh, you know, and honestly, it's one of the games most memorable to me, Maybe even more so than the World Cup, what happened. Like, World Cup is very memorable to me, uh, 2010, but especially 2014, obviously. 2010, you know, that's how we got from meeting Egypt. That's how we got to 2010. 2014 was amazing, obviously. But that was the game that really stuck in my heart. The next question. 
What is a place you haven't visited in Algeria that you wish or plan to visit next? Where I want to go next is Wahran and Konstantin. Jijid, I want to go back to Bijaya. I want to go back to Asia and go back. I want to go to Tizi. I never went to that area. Love Wahran, like the vibes. I love rhyme music. Uh, I love, I love, I love so much. Rabi Hafid, Jazair, and Gar Shab, Taz Jazair. It's amazing people will learn. You know, may Allah protect Jazair and Algeria for all Algerians and all people and continue to expand and grow, inshallah. Next question is, which teams are going to finish top four in the Premier League? And I do it in order. So basically, the thing is, I am a Man City fan, but I have to be realistic. Um, what I think, so I think fourth will be Man United. I think third will be Chelsea. I think second will be Manchester City. And number one, I think it's Arsenal. I they have great players. Saka, for instance, he's such a gem. This right winger, I find this team just I don't know. I find it really, really good. And honestly, I wouldn't mind Arsenal to win um, to win the league. I think they deserve a lot. And you know, the fans had a tough time in the past. You know, uh, it's been a very long time have they haven't won the league and I feel like when Man City isn't playing well or Liverpool isn't playing well or Chelsea isn't playing well, we have to give chances to other to other teams and uh, I really enjoy this team. Not personally like a fan or a huge fan or anything, but besides Man City, I really like Arsenal and I hope they succeed. Chelsea for me, you know, they got their a new coach. Um Potter, I believe is his last name. And now they're fifth in the table, so the Europa League, they were 12th. Tuchel was fired, which was unfortunate, but Chelsea weren't performing their best, so I guess it was fair, I suppose. But personally, I have kind of a bias of Tuchel. My favorite Chelsea players, personally, um, was, is Kante and Rhys James. Kante is an extraordinary player, and also I have some nostalgia from the, his Leicester days of Real Mahrez and the connection they had the, between them was incredible. And I like Rhys James as a defender, he's great. Um, it's third, Man United I think will finish fourth. And Man United isn't as good as they used to be, they're still a top team. Um, I think they will go higher, normally, because of the quality of the players that they have. But Cristiano Ronaldo isn't at the level as he used to be. Bruno Fernandes isn't either. Both of them are Portuguese from the same country. Uh, Maguire in the back, I'm sorry to say, I don't know what he's doing. The back is in shambles. Um, I hope they get fixed. And I had people say, how come you put... I, I did a tier ranking of Premier League teams for an order of preference. And I put Man United as neutral. And they're like, how come you put Man United as a neutral? And I have to be honest, for me... I don't hate a club, um, this club for multiple reasons. Number one, I can't hate a club that naturally gives good rivalry, but also at the moment I don't feel as though they are truly rivals. And I think they should be able to do better than that. Um, yeah, that's just honestly, honestly what I feel about that. Yeah, and Man City, I am currently not that happy. Pep Guardiola, his his tactics, I think, are silly. Yes, we won recently against Man United 6-3, but the recent scores is just ridiculous. Um, I don't like how he uses Real Mahrez. I mean, Real Mahrez, you know, uh, my boy, of course. He is a great player. Um, people forget about what he did the weeks before he missed that pe first penalty. He scored against Copenhagen. He scored again right before then. Two goals assist um, this season so far. One in Champions League, one in the Premier League, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Just really good player. Unfortunately, he missed those two penalties, but it doesn't mean anything. Even when Mahrez isn't at his standard, he's still good. Inshallah khair, inshallah improves, inshallah he comes back. Because I respect this captain no matter what. And when people bring up his past or his relationships or his personal life, that's not our business. Our job as Algerian people, as people in general, is to focus on 
his football, how he plays, that he has grinta harara, and he loves Jazair. He might not be as flamboyant as Ibn Spani or Suleimani when he talks about Zair, but he loves Jazair, he gives everything for Zair, always in Zair, donating to hospitals, charities, helping women, men, children, all walks of life. He's a great, extraordinary player, a humble, humble guy, a genius, and we must respect him. As Algerians, we, that's who he has. He has Algerians, we have to respect him. Next question. Um, they asked me if I prefer the Algeria team in 2014 or the Algeria team against Egypt. Um, personally, I prefer Algeria team um, in 2014. It was iconic, it was historic. We went to the second round in history for the first time. We were cheated out of it in 1982 when Austria and Germany conspired against us to, you know, <laughs> rig the game basically. And after that, that's how FIFA changed the law of, you know, the fact that teams in a group have to play at the same time uh, in order to succeed. Uh, and not get rigged basically in order, in order not to get corrupted. I got another question. They said, do you know how to dance Alawi? Uh, <laughs> that's a funny question. Yes, I do. Will I show you? No, no, I won't. <laughs> but yeah, I know how to do those dances. That's a funny one. Thank you for that one. Lighthearted. Mahrez or Balumi? Uh, personally for me, out of biasness, I said Mahrez. He did a lot of her country, uh, did a lot in Europe, played in Champions League, it was absolutely insane. Last season, Mahrez got 24 goals in all competitions and 9 assists in all con competitions. He had the most goals and goal contributions and assists in Manchester City in general. But people do not really like remembering that. Hopefully he'll go back to his form because I still know he has it in it when there's in him when people say oh you know he can't do this anymore it's over he's old he's 31 that's ridiculous let's name players who are over the age of 30 over the age of 31 who's still playing who's still legendary Zlatan Ibrahimovic it, he was like 39 or something almost 40 I don't exactly remember his age and he's still really good obviously most of the time injured or sidelined but still performing when he can still very very good um Dani Alves has been in Brazil, playing for Brazil forever. He was in Barca, Juventus, I believe Juventus, correct me if I'm wrong. And he's like 37, I believe, and he's doing great still. What else? There is a goalkeeper, they talk about Mbulhi being old at 36. Well, there's a goalkeeper, his name is Dino Zoff. Dino Zoff was an Italian legend. He won the World Cup of Italy in 1982 in Spain, you know, where Germany, Austria, Algeria, all that went down and, you know, first time in history that a team who won two games didn't go to the second leg of a tournament, uh, didn't go to the round of 16, I mean. And he won the World Cup at, I believe, 40 years old, 40, 41, 42, correct me if I'm wrong, but he went all the way through. He did a great, great uh, prestation performance, as we say it in English. And honestly, there's so many players like this. Like, for instance, there's Totti. He retired at 40 something years old. He was in Roma, 1993 to 2017. He was absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah, that's that's just the thing. That's what I believe in. Has Bloomy, like I said. I cannot really make a judgment because I did not see Bilumi, um playing. Obviously, football develops, and I'm sure uh, Mahrez of today and a Bulumi of then playing now, I'm sure Mahrez would be better. I Mahrez is a genius, uh, amazing player, Algerian player. I've never seen the likes of him before. Maybe I am biased, but football advances and players now are at a higher level than players back then. Uh, with a few exceptions, of course. But well, that's what I believe. Um, an unforgettable match for the Algerian national team. Um, I already mentioned these games, but this game, but I'll do all the games. Um, Algeria, Egypt, all the Algeria, Egypt games. Algeria, North Korea. I mean, South Korea. Algeria, South Korea, when we beat them 4 2, what an insane game. 
Goals by Slimani, Rafael Halish, Yassin Brahimi, and Jabu. The best match I've watched on uh, national team for me personally, it's Algeria, Korea. Algeria, South Korea. I loved Algeria, Egypt. It's very intense, but for me, 2014 World Cup, that was absolutely historical, absolutely magnificent. Um, and I'll be half to home all those players who are not team, and I'll be half to home, inshallah, all the players uh, who are in the current team. and. They love our country and we have to stop going after them because football is not more is more than a sport. It is the spirit of the FLN. Um, they did so much for us. There's players and, you know, my project coming up November 1st, inshallah, we'll talk about these players, what they've done for us and how the players now and Bilmadi, Jamal Bilmadi, uh, reflects these qualities of patriotism, national, this nationalism, and of course, uh, what makes us Algerian, what makes us Muslim. Uh, being honorable, being kind, being generous and honest. Uh, yeah, the other fave Algerian song. Oh, this is a hard one. At the moment, I love uh, Disco Maghreb by DJ Snake. That was amazing. I love, I love what he's doing uh, for us. I love the video that he made. I love that interview he made. He's like, why don't, you know, people of Algerian origins go to their country? and film videos because we have a beautiful country we have mountains we have the sea we have valleys we have desert we have animals you have never seen in your life before and you know fennec we even have lion like we had lions in the past there's cheetahs that came back it's a beautiful country we have everything the largest country of africa of we have the jazair and all the people of jazair um, and we hopefully inshallah all the people all the young people will improve our country because obviously it's not always easy uh, back in Algeria you know Hirak 2019 insanity but inshallah khair, inshallah our country can improve we have so much to offer to the world we're doing so great inshallah what makes me most nostalgic for my country for bled <sighs> that's a heavy question um, the people my family, my family more than anything. Algerians is your family. That's Algeria. That's why we all go to Algeria. Like not just for the views and the food and all that, but for your family. It's the attachment you have. All the videos, all the North Africans I met, it's just amazing. Algerians that I met, especially like they gave me so much help and they boosted my channel so much. Um, thank you for sharing my stuff. Thank you for all of that. Uh, I don't know, I, every time I post something about Algeria, it's like a stab in the heart. I haven't been there for four years, since 2018, and I really love my country more than anything. Um, I am American, you know, born here in America, but Algeria is always, will always be in my heart. <laughs>
um, defender. Great, he played. He was the most capped in the World Cup, actually. He uh, played the World Cup 2010 and 2014, went all the way to the round 16, and he scored a wonderful header from a corner uh, from Jabu, I believe. Yes, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, he was captain in the Germany game. Unfortunately, he had to get out, and after, because of cramps, you know, all of them are fasting. I'll be have to, inshallah, be have to all les joueurs en tout cas. And he, uh, after he got subbed out, the Germany scored. So that's how important he was, um, and I'm so glad that he got the African Cup in 2019. He really deserved it after all he's been through with us 11 years, I believe, the Algerian national team. Um, that's, you know, left back with Spani, center back Rafa Khalish. The other center back I would choose would be uh, Tuba. Tuba, I see a lot of good in him. He is a great player. He plays in Turkey now, but you know, uh, he was in Belgium beforehand. Ahmed Tuba is a great, great player. Rabbi Hafta, Hafta, inshallah. Um, Yusuf Atal, when he's good. Uh, I prefer Atal uh, over anyone else. He is excellent. And recently, you know, he not like Neymar. He did that spectacular goal against Nigeria. How amazing was that? A pass from Zuruki. It was just I love I love those players. I'll be have to uh inshallah I'm gonna say that a lot. I'm sorry, but I have to emphasize it because they do so much for our country and the negative reports that they got from them. Not good. But my middle uh my midfield would be Bin the Talib. Uh like yeah. Yeah, Bin Talib but not no. Bin Talib, I love Bin Talib. Um but Ben Nasser Fogoli Gudiora, the attackers I would put Bleli, Mahre Slimani all the way. Slimani, people forget about him a lot, but he is the number one goal scorer. 42 goals, amazing. Tons of assists. I don't remember how much exactly, but not only does he have good pressure, scores a lot, he has vision, the link up between him and Bleli and Mahrez. Amazing. It really helped, you know, when Slimani was playing with Mahrez in Leicester. That was pretty good. Always scoring goals. Unfortunate what happened in France recently with that racist, racist comment. And it's unfortunate that our players, Algerian players, North African players, still have to deal with xenophobia and Islamophobia. It's really sad, to be honest. I hope it gets fixed. Racism shouldn't be just an ad campaign. And I hope it gets fixed, inshallah, in France. It's a big issue. Big issue in Italy, too, I've noticed. They really need to develop some things. And when it's not Mahrez, bonus players I love. I love Unes. I love Amura. Um, Zuruki, he's uh, doing better. He's doing decent. Uh, inshallah, khair, inshallah, he improves. Um, yeah, I just. Rabbi Habtum Gat Antuka. Rabbi Habtum the ones born in Azir, the ones born in Kharij. They're all amazing. Uh, Rabbi Haftom <laughs> saying it so much, but Rabbi Haftom, inshallah. <laughs> anyway, who, what else? What inspired me to create my channel? Oh my god. So, uh, I'm gonna shout out some YouTubers right now. It's so funny to talk about this, but um, so I, oh, so since I created my channel February 16th, 2021, inshallah, we'll reach a year February 16th. Uh, 2023 and I saw so what made me interested I really wanted to have an Algerian community where I am there's literally no Algerians I know a few but either they were way older than me or I just you know you don't vibe with everyone right and uh, I saw these channels uh, I discovered them in 2019 during AFCON yeah during AFCON um, Idris Boatora and Yusuf's full if I'm pronoun I don't know I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your channels wrong or your name's wrong I'm sorry uh, kind of you know it's not my Algerian is technically not my first language is English um but those channels really inspired me I love the videos where they go on the street talk to people about Algeria I love people who love their country I love people who respect their families or are not afraid to talk about their families or show their families um you know 
the people of Gelb Le Harara, the passion I see from these two is amazing. Um, they're they're like they're great. I um, yeah, I, I really admire their work. Um, they're they're amazing channels and good examples for younger generations. Rabbi Haftom, inshallah. Uh, they seem to be really nice guys and they do a good job representing Algeria, representing Islam too um, as Muslims, giving a good image, open-minded, tolerance, it, really great. Rabbi Haftum, inshallah. Anyway, next question. What is the best for Mahrez? Should he leave city or stay? I cannot say my genuine opinion. Uh, well, I can, but... Hopefully not con too controversial. For me personally, it's Mahrez's choice to stay in the club or not. Uh, that's just honestly the truth. Personally, I feel like there's other clubs that he would excel in. Uh, he does so much for Man City. Great, team. I'm a Man City fan. I would want him to stay. I hope Pep Guardiola improves the tactics and doesn't try and be a philosopher uh, at you know, important games against Liverpool or Chelsea and all of that. But it's his choice. He can do what he wants. I respect either decision. He's our captain as long as he's playing. And that's the thing. He's not playing all the time. That's the problem. I would love him to start all the time. But Pep Guardiola, his tactics, he switches all the time. And players need rest anyway. But inshallah khair, inshallah he makes what is right for him. That's not my business where he wants to go, where he doesn't want to go. Um, Mahrez is a great player and I respect our captain, our Algerian captain, I respect what he does in Man City, I respect what he, the career he did with Leicester and the amazing things he did going from like the fifth division all the way to the first division in England, multiple trophies, uh, the le the legendary thing he did with PSG, uh, the free kick in the first leg when they won 2-1 and the two goals he scored <laughs> uh, against them. Really, really great uh, player. I'll be happy to, inshallah, saying it a lot. But again, who cares? <laughs> um, now, these questions are absolutely amazing. I'm so glad that I got this many from this person. Um, do I think we'll win the 2023 AFCON? I'm pretty sure AFCON, they moved it to 24, 25. Um, they said the possibility of hosting Algeria. That would be amazing. More training games are enough. But I'm like thinking... You know when the Motisibe, I can't pronounce his name, Patrick Motisibe, you know, this billionaire, coal mining, all of that, I think he's originally South African or from Zimbabwe or something, said, you know, Algeria deserves it. Obviously, we do deserve to host it, but it's kind of odd. Odd, it's like, okay, like, we corrupted you, uh, we corrupted the referee, maybe, I can't put the tinfoil hat, but we saw what happened. Um... And all of a sudden they're like, yeah, do the tournament, do the tournament, yeah, yes, yes, do it, do it, do it. It's kind of uh, stings a little bit because of how they treated us and now they're like, yes, do the tournament, yay, Algeria, yay. It's, it hurts a lot, to be honest. Um, I would love it if we hosted it. Um, will we win it? I think we can. Yeah, I think we can. I'll say it now, we're going to win it. <laughs> inshallah, I have to say always inshallah. We have to win well, obviously. But I think we can win it. Uh, we have great, great player, great quality players, new players that add so much to the team. My starting lineup now is Ben Spani, uh, Tuba, uh, Tuba, Bedren, and Atal, if he's good. Uh, ben Nasser, Ben Talib, Zuruki. Starting uh, Slimani, Belayli, Mahrez. If Mahrez is not at the best, Unes. Um, and Omora mixed in somewhere. I don't know, but that's my starting lineup. New World Cup format with the 48 teams and 10 African teams qualifying 2026, I believe, which will be in the US, and Mexico, and Canada. So I'll be right here. But hopefully by that time, I'll be. In, well, I won't say my plans because I should keep it to myself. But. Uh, it's, it's, well, people know my plans. It doesn't matter. Anyways, I personally don't, I, I wish it was just the 32 teams. Um, I always believe that Africa should have had more because we have 
56 countries in Africa and we have great teams that didn't qualify besides us. Nigeria were cheated out from the referees. Ivory Coast should have went to the World Cup as well. Senegal deserved it. Uh, you know what I think about Cameroon, you know exactly what I think, but I'm not gonna go there right now. We should move on, but inshallah khair. Uh, not only will it tire the players out, it's just kind of like using them like merchandise, which I don't like. We already kind of use players as merchandise. Um, they'll be worn out, and I know that they did proposition that World Cup every two years and African Cup every four years, Europe, European Cup every four years, uh, Europa Cup, Copa America, Asian Cup, same thing. I just think that's insanity. Uh, World Cup should be the special thing every four years, not every two years. 2022 is the last World Cup like that, the last special World Cup. Inshallah, we'll have other World Cups and it'll be even more special when we're there. Inshallah, we qualify in 2026. But honestly, I don't like um, how FIFA is handling this CAF, FAF, uh, CONCACAF, uh, CONMEBOL, uh, Asian Federation. Like, I feel like there should be some revolution somehow because football is more than a sport. It unites the people. Um, and football has a real history between workers and governments and you know crazy if glazers super league all of that I feel like things need to change uh, Okay, rank the new stadiums Baraki Wahran Tiziwizu Dwera uh, For me personally, I love Tiziwizu Stadium. It's beautiful. Like it's amazing. Uh, my side hehe. <laughs> anyway, one of my sides Baraki is pretty looking pretty nice uh, and Wira, I haven't seen that one yet. I think I have, but I would rank it out of those TZ number one, Oran, Wahara number two, Boruk Bareki number three, and I guess Duera number four. Um, I don't recall if I saw it, I probably did, but yeah, pretty good. Best Algerian player for the moment. Uh, personally, best Algerian player, Slimani. Slimani. You have to admit it, he's the world's historic player. Uh, for Algeria, amazing. Beat everyone, 42 goals. It would have been 44, if I'm not mistaken. If they count those goals, that were supposed to be in. That referee was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, best goalkeeper to replace Mbourhe. I would say uh, Mondria seems pretty good. He's at, he Yes, he's in second division, I believe. But he is great. Rabi Haftu, inshallah, hopefully he'll go up. Zigba is pretty good too uh, from Tizi Wuzu. Very lucid. Uh, he did save that penalty with his foot uh, at one of the games. I don't remember which one. I think it was Tanzania. Correct me if I am wrong, but that. Yeah, Mondaria is like a cat. Like, oh my goodness. Like, all over. Good positionment. Uh, good, very good with his feet. Very balanced. Very lucid. Amazing. Uh, best Algeria jersey is. This is my favorite jersey. <laughs> Personally, right here. I actually prefer the green one, but I didn't hang it. Today, I really like the green one and the white one. Usually, I had a superstition that we win in the green one and lose in the... Uh, no, we would win in the white one and lose in the green one. Um, that superstition came from the Germany game. But anyways, that's besides the point. Uh, Atal or Benayeda? Uh, Atal. Uh, Benayada, he's good defensively, obviously, in some ways, but we have to be honest here, and um, he has to improve in the air. A lot of goals in the Arab Cup, for instance, came from his side. He's not that great in the air, and he would go away, get away from the line, um, oh, too far away from the 18-yard box, and that, not as a defender, he's tall, he should be good in the air. Um, he has to improve in that aspect. He is physical and strong, and that's good that he can defend well and go 1v1, but sometimes he just lacks lucidity, lacks precision. So for me, it's Atal. Atal is combative. That's a pro sometimes that's a problem because of injury issues that I'll be have to, and he comes back, he did that great goal, like I said. Atal the goal, yeah, Atal. That's a new thing. Anyway, whatever. Finally, my reaction to Bil Mali staying till 2026. Will Mahdi staying? That makes me so happy. Rabbi have to inshallah. All those journals that go against him. Absolutely ridiculous. He loves our country. He loves Algeria. He loves Algeria. And we have to respect this guy. Journalists, what do they all have in common? What do they all have in common exactly? 
What they have in common is that all they want is Marifa. Oh my, Mr. Fushga, my Joseph. Mr. Fushga, la pouvoir. That's all they want. You know, before Bin Madi, why they don't like Bin Madi? Before Bin Madi, what would they do? These journalists from Al Haddaf, Dizet Fuch, Shuruk, uh, I can't name, I can't remember all the channels right now, but these journalists, what they do? Le Gazette de Fenech, Le Bouter. When Bin Madi wasn't there to put them in their place when they wanted to do something wrong, what would they do? They would get, uh, you know, players that they wanted. They would try and pay off the coach. And then some coaches, I'm not going to name names, but obviously you can kind of sell the Aklia mentality. Maharifa, they don't love Zaid. And really, I'm telling you guys, if you want sources, good sources um, about football from coming from Algeria, do not, like, the majority of it, if it's not for saying who's, not even line up, mess up, like they messed up. Uh, made Nasser captain instead of Spain when he was the captain. Yeah, do not follow these sources from coming out of Algeria. I recommend from Europe what they're saying about that. Um, Algerians in Europe that I like, uh, Sam Futex, great channel, independent uh, journalist, amazing. She lives in France, originally Algerian. Vanessa I'm one legend as well. Those are my role models personally because uh, they're girls like me of Algerian descent. So, yeah. Uh, Crazy, crazy times. Uh, amazing. Rabbi Hafid Gali Jewel. Rabbi Hafid Bil Madi. Inshallah. Rabbi Hafid Gali Shab Jazair. Rabbi Hafid Jazair. See you in the next one coming out soon. Inshallah. I have a player spotlight about Mahrez. Uh, just a whole career thing, you know, supporting them, the player. And Inshallah, I have a video coming out soon, November 1st, for, you know, remembrance of the FLN national team. See you next time. Like, comment, ex and subscribe. And if you like football in general, make sure to check out Maya Talks Football. Thank you.